I hear your voice in the cool moonlight? Do you sing those words for me? To me they sound so empty. Why do you sound so sad? As you tell me of the things you've seen and the home. Hi everyone, this is Natalie and I'll be your Sunday host for Witches of the Moon. This week's topic is working with magical beings. And this is a topic that for me is a little bit new, so please forgive me if this is a repetition of some of the things that you've already heard this week. But I wanted to share my personal experiences in working with magical beings and how I incorporate that into my practice. One of the things that I would like to talk about today is the various types of magical beings that you can choose to work with and there are a vast number and different types. And why are those a little bit different and what are the differences between them? I also would like to talk about why you would do that and some cautionary tales in working with magical creatures. First of all, there are what I would consider three main categories of magical beings. You have those magical creatures that um, some would consider entirely fictitious or that maybe have not been on the earth in a very long time but are very important within multiple cultures around the world and hold a lot of magical power. They've been attributed magical characteristics and it may be those particular characteristics um, or energies that you need to tap into. So those would include things like dragons, unicorns, chimeras, creatures like that and there are a vast number of those I know one of the pagan groups the order of the raven is in the process of putting together an archive that lists alphabetically all of the various mythical creatures and magical creatures so that will be interesting once they get that compiled um, the next category of magical creatures that I'd like to talk about are those that some that some may classify them in the first group but I kinda in my mind and in my heart they're a little bit different those are those creatures which are considered magical by nature but which I think are akin to us as human beings as, as creations that I think have existed on the planet in some form or another and actually I do believe in dragons I have a theory about that but um, it's my theory that dragons were dinosaurs that had not been killed out yet because they exist in every culture around the world and it seems to make sense that around the time they started appearing was about the time that you know we were gaining strength on the planet and eliminating other species but that's just my personal opinion the next category as I was saying are creatures that I think exist around us now but maybe keep themselves hidden uh, and wield a lot of magical power and those would be things like elves, fairies, dryads, nymphs, um, those that have a real close relationship to nature and to mother nature and to the planet in ways that a lot of us strive to have but maybe don't quite have. The next category of magical creature are those that I would really caution you about working with and those are things like disembodied spirits, demons, general energy forces, things that are very intelligent. So I would caution you about those and I'll get into that in a few minutes. Why would you choose to work with any of these creatures at all? Well the answer to that is very simple. A lot of times these characters control energies or contain energies and characteristics that maybe we feel would be of use to us in achieving a magical goal, a spiritual goal, um, even a physical goal. I know that for me in the Celtic path, having a connection to my forefathers and to my ancestors and the history of the land to which my family comes from is very important to me. Now I have a lot of Welsh, Scottish, and Irish blood. I have a little bit of French and I have some Native American blood. I have Cherokee and Sioux. And I have just a smidgen of Dutch blood in me as well. My grandmother was half Dutch, half Irish. So I I find that connecting with my ancestors in that way helps me to draw strength and in incorporating what I know of the Fae and of the She into my practice and asking them to lend their energies to me um, and help me to focus better 
uh, helps me to add to my energy and I find that my magical workings are sometimes a little more effective when I do that. Now, in terms of working with demons uh, specifically, but also negative energy forces, I know a lot of people when they first get into the craft, they think, oh, we're going to summon demons and they think ceremonial magic and they see the big, you know, uh, Baphomet on the floor with the symbols and they're, ah, you know. Um, Dr. Buckland, in his book, The Complete Book of Witchcraft, had an excellent analogy to that. And it has been <laughs> something that has stuck in my mind. You know, every now and then someone says something and it sticks in your brain and you think, yeah, that's, that's a good point. And what he said is that working with these kinds of spirits, yeah, you can do it, but it's akin to hooking a transistor radio up to a car battery. You're going to get quite a shock. Um, what you get, it's powerful, but it may not be quite what you want it to be and it may not work out quite the way you think it's going to that oftentimes those kinds of energies come back on you now why does that happen well there's a couple of reasons one you're dealing a lot of times in uh, an energy or an entity that has been around a lot longer than you these energies and entities tend to be very intelligent they're often able of creating their own magic and can work their way around your defenses very easily and they will often prey on your energy. These are those energy forces that like to feed off your life force and suck your energy. They're attracted to your negative energy particularly. And anytime you're bringing something like that into your, your practice or into your life, you are asking for some trouble. You are looking at um, inviting something that you maybe can't quite get rid of or control and so that is something I always caution against um, a lot of people think they can handle it if you think you can cheers to you it's a personal choice for me I choose not to work with it I understand that it's there I respect it and I leave it alone <laughs> Now, when you are working with magical beings, one thing that I will tell you is regardless of the type of magical creature that you are working with, you do need to make sure that you have your proper defenses in place. Because even if you aren't working with a particularly negative energy there, remember that magic attracts magic. That energy that you're raising, and especially if you're adding something otherworldly to your practice, is likely to attract some energies that are maybe not so desirable. So you want to make sure that your defenses are in place and that you're well protected before you do this. I also strongly recommend that you do the research on the type of creature that you're going to be working with. As I've stated before, I like to work with both the Fae and the She. The She are what you would consider um, leprechauns. They're the little people. They're very important in Celtic culture. They've been around human beings for a very long time. The Fae are more like the Tuatha Dé Danann and the Fairy um, and and and. and those creatures that are descended from the gods and goddesses of the of the Celtic pantheon and those are the ones that I think appeal to me the most I feel that I connect with them in a, in a better way people know that leprechauns tend to be a little mischievous the fae can be as well they can be easily offended so anytime you're working with a magical creature do your research on those creatures figure out what it is about them that you feel is important to your practice or that you could utilize in the practice and the most important piece of advice that i can give you in working with a magical creature is remember and respect what you're working with know that you are being allowed to utilize their energy and their wisdom in your practice and as such you want to make sure that you give them some sort of a thank you whether it be in a, the form of an offering for me I know that the Fae like milk so I leave a little bowl of milk with honey um, I have it sitting on the altar and I will often place it out, out of doors overnight um, in order to tell them thank you for the energies some people like to work with those natural energies such as the four elements and those are okay too I often utilize elemental magic in mine but again if you're working with the guardians of the of the elements you want to be sure that you're saying thank you and that you're offering um, something to them even if it's just a verbal thank you please you know be invited in remember you're inviting in you're not commanding I think that's the biggest thing you're not commanding that being to give you its energy you are requesting that being to give you its energy and that is something that you always want to keep in mind because if you ever get a little too pompous trust me they're gonna knock you back on your ass um, I really do feel that working with magical beings can add a lot to your practice you can get a lot done as long as you remember 
what you're working with and you show your proper respect. In terms of your choice to do so, it's a personal choice and who you work with, again, do your research. There's a lot of information out there. Read it very well. Get to know who you want to work with. Why would you want to work with them? And make that choice on your own. Just be sure you have your protections in place. Thank you very much for watching Witches of the Moon. I hope that this video was helpful to you in some way. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. We look forward to reading them. Thank you and have a blessed day.